Hi. Now, in this last part of the question, we've got that Alice is about to go on a six hour journey. Given that it is 127 hours since Alice last charged her phone, find the probability that her phone will not need charging before her journey is completed. And so if you'd like to uh, just give this a go, if you haven't tried already, uh, then uh, I'll give you a moment just to pause the video. Okay, now when we start, let's just draw up our curve for the length of time L hours that a phone will work before it needs charging. And we know that it's normally distributed with a mean of 100. Now we're given that uh, it's 127 hours since Alice last, last charged her phone. So if I mark in that 127 hours there, let's just put that as 127 hours. Then if Alice is about to go on a journey, a six hour journey, then if we add six hours to that, that's going to bring us up to 133 hours. So if we just put a marker in there at 133 hours, then we've got to find the probability that her phone will not need charging before her journey is completed. So what we've got to do essentially is compare the probability of being more than 133 with the probability of being more than 127. It's based around this idea, just as a quick recap. It's about the probability of something given that something else has occurred. A formula that you should be familiar with, probability of A given B. It's equal to the probability of both events occurring, A and B, divided by the probability of the given event B. So this is a formula, as I say, that you should be familiar with. It's generally in most textbooks and uh, on formula sheets. So uh, it does help, though, to remember it. So how does that fit into uh, this? Well, essentially, you've got the probability that the phone will not need charging. So we'll just lead with that. The probability it will not need charging. And that would mean that we've got the probability that it will last, it will work for more than 133 hours. That's, it's got to be more than 133 hours, given that we know that it lasts at least working up to 127. So L is greater than 127. And if you compare this with this result here, you'll see that we need both events to occur. And for both of these to, events to be satisfied, L must be more than 133. Because if it's more than 133, it will be more than 127. So we've got probability L is greater than 133 hours. And we compare this with, or divide it, with the probability of the given event, which is the probability that L is greater than 127. Now, if we work out the probability that L is greater than 133, that's going to be represented by this area here. And we're comparing that with the probability that L is greater than 127, all of this area here and into there as well, okay? So uh, we'll just go over a little bit more blue in there as well, okay? So I hope you can see that. So we're comparing essentially this proportion to all of this proportion. Conditional probability, all right? Anyway, to work this out, we need to work out the probability L is greater than 133. So we need to work out the corresponding observed Z value there, okay? So uh, if we just label this, say, Z, then what's that going to be? Well, we can standardize it. That value of Z is going to equal 133, the observed value, minus the mean, 100, all divided by the standard deviation, which is 15. Work that out, and it's 2.2. 133, in other words, is 2.2 standard deviations above the mean here of 100. All right? 
The 127, we worked that out in the uh, previous part. We worked out the probability of being more than 127, so we'll just recall that when we get there. But for this one, probability L is greater than 133. That's the same as the probability then of Z being greater than 2.2. And we'll just divide that then by the probability of L being greater than 127. So the probability of Z being greater than 2.2 is going to be 1 minus the probability that Z is less than 2.2. 1 being the whole area, and we just take away the area to the left of Z. And we're dividing that then by the probability of L being greater than 127. Now if you look up in your tables, the probability of Z being less than 2.2, you'll find you'll get... 0.0139 and we worked out the probability of L being greater than 127 in an earlier part to this question. We found it out to be 0.0359. So all we need to do is just do that sum and if you do you'll find you get 0.3871 and so on. Which if we round to say uh, three significant figures that's going to equal 0.387 to 3SF, three significant figures. Okay, so hope you've been able to follow my working there. Quite a tricky problem, I feel, but um, there you go.